Oh boy, if I just sit here with this new watch, I can literally wait forever for the perfect opportunity and literally never die. Yeah. You see this? The whole sitting in one place for an indefinite amount of time. This is what a lot of people think the Cloak and Dagger is good for. But no. This thing is way more useful than a lot of people realize, and I don't see people give it enough credit. So let me show you. For those uninformed, the Cloak and Dagger functions similarly to the Invis Watch, but it drains based on your movement speed instead of flat time. The faster you move while cloaked, the faster it drains. Standing still allows you to recharge while cloaked at the same rate it would when uncloaked, doing so twice as fast as the Invis Watch. However, it is not without weaknesses. If you're constantly moving forward, it drains roughly twice as fast as the Invis Watch. It also recharges 35% less cloak from ammo boxes, and can only do so when uncloaked. Also, running out of cloak with it doesn't force a decloak, instead it makes you partially transparent, which causes... this. To put it simply, the Cloak and Dagger's main strength is that it gives you more control over when you decloak, at the cost of mobility. Even the L'Etranger can't mitigate its downsides completely, though it does help. But how do we actually use it? Well, it allows you to play Spy more patiently and thoughtfully. As long as you can navigate through enemy lines, you can remain hidden for as long as you want. You have full control over when you decloak, and you can use it to pick your moments. If used right, it can do a really good job at keeping you alive. Though when I was a new player, I kind of got tunnel vision on that specific purpose. What I mean is that I would sit in this specific spot and wait for a really long time before feeling absolutely safe that I'd get away with the kill. The issue is that I played a bit too passively. I eventually wrote it off and started using the Dead Ringer, only realized that I liked stock better. And I stopped using the Dead Ringer before it got nerfed. This is the reason I wouldn't recommend you use this as a new player. It can teach you bad habits. You should get used to the movement of the stockwatch before trying the more passive playstyle of the Cloak and Dagger. Anyway, that aside, the Cloak and Dagger is a really good watch for waiting. But where should you wait? Well mainly, you should be looking for places that players are unlikely to walk. This generally comes down to map knowledge, but often your best bets are next to stairs or on top of props. You see these stupid boxes that seem absolutely pointless and have no reason for anyone to stand on them? Well, that's where you can stand. Higher up places also have the benefit of being harder to accidentally hit with splash damage and give you a good view of what's going on. When trying to reach that spot though, due to the reduced cloak, you'll be stopping quite a bit on your way there. Again, do your best to stay out of the way of other players, as you may have to quickly find hiding spots on the fly to recharge. You cannot recharge with ammo while cloaked, but you can very quickly drop your cloak and put it back on again to snag an ammo pack. Though be wary, this may cause players to hear the decloak sound and become alerted. Of course, once you are at the spot, when do you decloak? Well, you're best to go for a kill as soon as possible after decloaking, so you'll want to decloak when you see distracted players. But you'll also want to double check around you that there aren't any players that may see you decloak and catch you off guard. Of course, you'll still need to take some risks, as it'll take experience to learn what you're more likely to get away with. No pain, no gain. Ow. But once you get the stab, you need to get out. Now personally, I don't think I ever really saw other spies pull off good escapes with the Cloak and Dagger. But that's when it hit me. The biggest hidden strength of the Cloak and Dagger is that it's near impossible to tell when the enemy spy is using it. Oh my god, did your head explode? I don't think anyone has really thought about this, and how powerful that is. Because most players will expect spies to run away as far as possible. Which with stock, they will often do. And players will spy check all of that area. 
but with the cloak and dagger, you can simply just start running away, and then stop. Stop it. That thing about being able to find hiding spots on the fly really helps out here, especially on high ground to deny splash damage. If you can give the illusion that you've run away into an area with branching paths, you can just take none of those options and come to a dead stop. Under normal circumstances, this is the last thing that I'd expect you to do. But you can't rely on this stopping trick to work every time, especially against pyros, in which you're much better off just getting distance from them. So yeah, if you're smart with it, you can use the cloak and dagger to its fullest potential. I'd say it's on equal grounds to stock, but it does give you a lot more time to stop and think. The cloak and dagger spy appears out of nowhere, stabs someone, refuses to elaborate, and leaves.